Hey everybody, Dr. Nick here on Feel Good Friday. Today, we're diving a little bit deeper into blood flow restriction training. If you haven't already, you have to check out my video on blood flow restriction training, as well as my article on TonyGenocore.com. I'll link both of those in the description box down below. Of the proposed mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth, blood flow restriction training taps into metabolic damage, which is more the buildup of metabolites in the muscle, and that muscle burn. So what I meant to say here was metabolic stress, not metabolic damage. Metabolic stress is the term used in the literature for the method of hypertrophy that involves the buildup of metabolites and that burn. Metabolic damage is something completely different referring to long-term changes in your metabolism over time. That's different than trying to get maximum overall volume. If maximum volume is your goal, blood flow restriction training may not be the tool for you. That's why it's important to keep your goal in mind and have a purpose when you train. For example, if your goal is to get as much overall volume of quality squats, using blood flow restriction training is going to cause your muscles to fatigue prematurely. It's going to increase the burn and the fatigue from the workout, but it's going to decrease your overall volume. Even if your goal is to maximize metabolic damage, I still wouldn't recommend blood flow restriction training for the big compound movements like squats and deadlifts. Those types of movements are very complex and require every muscle involved to be firing strongly. What blood flow restriction training is going to do, it's going to cause certain muscles to fatigue quicker than others. So it has the potential to alter the mechanics of the movement. So when considering using blood flow restriction training, exercise selection is key. As I mentioned in my previous video and article, the idea behind blood flow restriction training is to cause the blood to pool in the muscles and the veins. So by strapping the tourniquet on your arm or your legs, you're preventing that blood from leaving that muscle and going back to the heart. However, there's another helper in this system, and that's gravity. Gravity is going to keep the blood in your arms or in your legs. So work with it. For example, as I'm performing a dumbbell curl, the wraps are resisting that blood from returning back to the heart and causing it to pool in my arms and my veins. But gravity is also keeping that blood down there. So you can see how the veins are really popping out now, but If I were to raise my arms up, now the veins don't pop out as much because gravity is causing that blood to return back to the heart. So if my arms are up, gravity is now working against our goal, which is to keep the blood in the arms. So my suggestion is if you're going to use blood flow restriction training, use it for exercises that put the targeted muscle in a dependent position. That just means hanging down. Because again, that's going to let gravity work with you in your goal of keeping that blood in the arms and preventing it from going back to the heart. So some exercises that I would recommend using blood flow restriction training with are any kind of curling movement where the arms are hanging down. So that includes spider curls, preacher curls, or any kind of standing press down or standing curl variation. Also forearm work. If you're going to use it for your forearms, be sure to still wrap it up by your shoulders. You don't want to wrap it down by your arm, by your forearms. For the legs, same thing. You want to keep the legs in a dependent position so that gravity helps keep that blood in the legs. So things like leg extensions, leg curls, calf raises, Again, just like the forearms, if you want to work your calves, keep that wrap up near the hip. Exercises that I wouldn't recommend using blood flow restriction training with are, again, big compound movements like squats, deadlifts, bench presses, overhead presses, but also any exercise that puts the targeted muscle in the air. Things like a leg press machine where you're angled back at a 45 degree angle. That's going to cause that blood 
to be pulled by gravity out of your legs and back to your heart. Also things like high cable curls in a cable column where the high cable causes you to bring your arms up above your heart and then you perform the exercise up like this. This is going to prevent that blood from pooling in your arms because gravity is going to pull it back down to the heart. So this is the same thing with a lying triceps extension. You can see that the arms are pointed upward so gravity would be pulling that blood down out of your arms and toward the heart. So blood flow restriction training can be a great tool in your toolbox. However, you have to remember why we're doing it. We want that blood to pool in the arms or the legs. Gravity is going to help us with that. So be sure to pick exercises where the arms or legs are hanging in a dependent position and not raised up above the heart. Thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to Proclusion for supplying the blood flow restriction chaining wraps. Be sure to check them out. I'll put a link to their website down below. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.